Good morning, everyone. It's 11 o'clock. It's Jason Schwartz. It's the Neutral Zone. We have a great guest today. You're going to love this guy. What's that? Well, that's the Maui Coral Arts Group. This next Sunday at 3 o'clock, they're having their annual show to kick off the holiday season. You want to go see that. Silent Night? What's that? Oh, I know what that is. Sympathy for the Devil. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. No, that isn't Mick Jaggy. I've probably been around tell. for a long, long That's me. I was over so at many Maui Community so College, now the University of Hawaii Maui College. And I in a media class and they said we need somebody to sing this song so they grabbed and while at the college in a class I just took a class of music and created media and I met someone and I thought that was a good guest I think I should bring it to but what so husband you see you is the nature of my game. Wow. Excuse me, I feel a little drunk when I can't see. Uh, this is Jason Schwartz. Good morning. It's Monday. Wow, it's just before Thanksgiving, November something. I think it's 25, something like that. And... Um, we have Sean Hartman here. Sean Hartman was a classmate, is a classmate at the creative media um, spot at the college. The creative media department Brian Cohn is putting together over there has a course called Finding Your Voice. And it's about uh, what is your part in the media and screenplay writing and things like that a little bit. Introduction. And when that began, uh, someone just wrote something to me that I can't see. See, when you're blind, people can do all kinds of things trying to write. You open your mouth and say something, and I will hear you. If you don't, Sean Harmon, you're on the air. You got a mic. Say something. How you doing? Hello. Nice, nice to see you here, Jason. Hi. I, literally, Sean, just so you know. The reason you think I can see is because the things that are around me are familiar. If you want to write something, you, you'll you find uh, that's the reason that I now have kind of gotten myself away from editing. There's a great guy that teaches at the uh, college named Adi Alad. He teaches editing. He was the guy that edited the two movies that Brian Cohn did, Get a Job and Kuliana. And I very much enjoyed his editing class, and he has another one coming, but... When you can't see, it really makes it very difficult. So it's a very funny thing. So I um, I used to do all my projects alone, and now I'm in a phase where I want to do it with people, you know, if I'm doing a cool. video. So Sean Parkman is by himself a wonderful man. And if you met him, you'd say, boy, this guy is a gentle being, just a gentle and loving man. But then he started talking, and... He gave a hint that he has a situation with his daughter, who also goes to school at the university now. And that was intriguing. And then he talked a little about bullying, and he, he has done a lot about anti-bullying in this state. And maybe further. Sean, welcome to our show. And you're going to have to, when you're sitting with me, if you don't jump in, you may see that the thing is over. All right. I want you and I to have a conversation. So talk to me. Where did you begin this? What started you on this whole thing of bullying? It obviously involves your daughter. Right, right. Yeah. Who has to be very special. She's How the old most is she special. Now? How old is she's she now? She's 16. And she's at the college with us. How is that? Yeah. She's studying hard. She's studying her little heart out. Get a little out. closer. That's good. Good. She's job. doing... Uh, doing really good she wants to go into animation and uh that's it's right up her alley and she's a great artist i'm proud of her she puts her heart and soul into it and uh, after everything she's been through you know with with some incidents i'll go into in a little well, bit well so i'm asking here we are 
I'll give you my version intro. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Here's this guy at school talking about his daughter. He just told you his daughter is 16. Any of you out there that have a 16-year-old daughter, don't find them at Maui Community College studying <laughs> animation right. yet, maybe. So, this is a special girl. Tell us more about your daughter in a, in a framework of how you got here, because she went through stuff because of the life that she's been having. Right. Talk about her and, and what was going on. She, um, she started out, she was born here at, at Maui Memorial in uh, 2003. And she's, you know, her, just her heart and soul is all about Maui and love and aloha and helping other people. And she's just probably one of the kindest people you'll ever meet. Um, she started school at Haleakala Waldorf up country and did great there. And then we moved to Kihei and we, she went to another school. Uh, the school down there she went to, one day she noticed a, a boy, uh, uh, with autism uh, and he got beat up and when he was getting beat up she looked around for somebody who was supposed to be watching the kid or another teacher she didn't see one and nobody was doing anything Get a little to, closer. That's nobody was doing anything to help the the boy and this is when she was in second grade and the boy was in second grade too and it was like five or six uh, other kids but they were all boys older boys and she went up to him and said, hey, you guys, please don't do that. We, we don't hurt our friends. Stop. And, you know, they turned around, said, F you, Howie, you know, and, and B-I-T-C-H, pushed her down and beat the crap out of her. And uh, I was not notified about this and was very concerned. This was back in 2012. The reason I ask you about the mic was the further away, the more echo. So it's just a matter of being this close so you have more presence for our audience out there. Because you and I can hear cool. it well. Yeah. That's what's up. So this was 2012, and how yep. old was she then? Eight. Eight years old. Eight. Okay. And then she uh, she was she was held in the nurse's office till the end of school. I was driving up to school, and when I drove up, I noticed the principal was actually walking her to class to drop her off before the end of school bell rang. Nobody notified me. Nobody called me. Um, stopped my car immediately. Saw him as I was driving in to pick her up. You know, I always drove in and picked her up a few minutes before and asked the principal what happened. And he said, oh, we had a small incident at school today. But lo and behold, I found out, if you, if you go on Google, you, you, you punch in my name, uh, you can look this stuff up for yourself. You can see what happened. Um, there's been cover-ups from it. Cause she well, I'm, I'm stopping. We're on radio, so you can do all that at yeah. your own time. Here's what happened. Tell us what happened. Well, Give she, us a notion of what happened at this thing. Was she beaten up? Yeah, she was beat up. And it was covered on a little piece of video, and no one told you, and the end of school day came, and you're this principal's walking your daughter, and so... It wasn't covered on video. That's that's the thing. Nobody notified me when this first happened. What, what happened? She got beat up when okay. she asked the boys to stop doing this stuff. Okay, so that's what her, happened. She got her ass. And then you got involved and you said, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah, and the principal was, was real offish. He didn't um, tell me what was going on. He said it should have been the nurse's job to call me, not his. And it was just a bunch of BS. And, and basically from that, it came out to her pointing these boys out. She pointed out every one. Um, from what I understand, they got one day suspension from it, and then it went on to um, her getting beat up again because she pointed them out, and again, and again, and again. And it's all this is all documented with documents and stuff. So uh, again, this story. The reason I'm trying to get him through this early part. This guy here is like a one man army. He said this isn't right, and he got involved. And he has made a difference. So all this fighting and all this yeah. stuff happening yeah. again and again, again and, and again, again. And you said, hey, I no, finally I've pulled her out. It. Yeah, I've had her. I, I pulled her out for her own safety. Doctors were telling me, everybody, get her out of the school. It's, so it's not a safe you, environment. So I took her out, privately tutored her. Um, she did great with private tutoring. Got her uh, help with a, a wonderful therapist. And um, she made it to this point to where she's doing 
pretty good in in college you know she graduated high school early yeah. she well, took the I, test i'm slowing you down because you were telling us details about the incident. there's so many details i well, just don't well, want to go into them all i just that's great i want yeah. you to i want you to tell me here we are here's your daughter she's eight years old she sees a series of incidents someone getting beaten up she gets beaten up it happens again and again and again right, right. it's a public school private school it was public public school public. father says i've had enough of this pulls his daughter out of school privately tutoring her yes she must be one heck of a smart kid to be in college is this is her first thank year? you yeah, this is her first year. First year in college at 16. Yeah. So she accelerated because she's very smart and capable and sees something and stands up for it. Just Does like the right thing. Dad. Thank you. You've been a great role model, I'm sure, before and after. Yeah. So what did you do next, my friend? So one night she came to me. She she had a nightmare. And she, she had a lot of nightmares from PTSD from getting beat up like this. And she said, Dad... Can you help me help me do something and with tears in her eyes? And I said, yeah, honey, anything you want. Let me know. What, you, what, what do you need? She says, Dad, can you help me make it so other kids don't get bullied like I got bullied? Can you please? And I'm like, what the heck? What do, you, what do you want me to do, honey? And she said, you were in the military. You're an honorably discharged veteran. You, you know, you, you know there are a lot of good people. Do something. Please help me. I said, okay, I will. And so from that point on, we got into contact with some uh, anti-bully agencies uh, around the world. And it just became... Anti-bullying agencies. Yes, anti-bullying. Uh, Stand for the Silent is, is one. It's great. It's uh, um, There's Rachel's Project. There's a bunch of them. Now, at this time, you have to understand, this. The, from, from what I understand, my research, the state of Hawaii was talking about doing anti-bully programs, but they had none in place at the schools that were, you know, all the time. And the most important thing here is education and awareness for the schools so they pick up um, what's going on with bullying and suicide. Back in 2012, Ron Nazoe with the, the um, Hawaii State Teachers Association made had a news article talking about how um, Hawaii uh, didn't have any programs in place for bullying and suicide. And they started that year, and I believe as a result from us, you know, doing a uh, putting pressure and and getting help from the community members whether it's the mayor governor pressure? well you, when you talk to senators mayors governors you put pressure by putting the truth putting the truth out this there is for all of us to hear yes. and understand you put the truth in front of somebody who is in a position where they have no choice but to do something about it Right? That to me, you knew where to go. You now have someone responding and it affects programs. Great. Well, it helped, yeah, and it helped in a positive way. And uh, from that, now every single public school has an anti bully program. Fantastic. They talk about it. The suicide level has dropped, even though they're, it's one of the number one killers in the state of Hawaii. And the number one reason back when this was happening with my daughter for suicide is bullying. And it's a really, really hard subject well, to talk about. Let's, for example, tell us what bullying is. Beating someone up, that surely is bullying. bullying. It can be cyberbullying, where somebody's... Cyberbullying, meaning C-Y-B-E-R, cyber. Yeah. Cyberbullying. like a cyber-toothed tiger. It can be bullying at work. Cyberbullying means... Yeah. It means messages going out on the internet to someone else saying, you're ugly, you're this, yep. whatever it yep. may be. It so be. that's a huge thing because that is like being with someone and it's verbal abuse. Okay, and what's the next one? Uh, there's other ones. There's physical bullying. Um, there's mental bullying. There's there's people, um, you know, at school. I think, it, I think it's based... You know, not just at home. A lot of people, uh, a lot of institutions, they like to blame the parents. <clears throat> it's not always the parents' fault. Sometimes it's the institution. They just don't have the proper tools they need to deal with these these things. And so we came up after talking to hundreds, literally hundreds of people that wanted to help. We came up with a program, and that program was to get a team of individuals that could go from school to school. Uh, the funds aren't there right now, and the school is really underfunded. I mean, they couldn't even afford air conditioners for a while there, and and the proper amount of teachers they needed at school. And 
you keep backing away from the microphone, so I'm oh. just going to share with you again. Yeah, go ahead. It isn't a big problem, but this is radio, and your presence, you're good, right there. About three inches is good. We're doing this for you guys out there in radio land, because on TV you can read his lips and you can hear him fine. <laughs> but on the radio, the further you are away, you know, this is too close. <laughs> you know, this is too far away because the audience, otherwise there's yeah. just too much echo. It's, so the number, so. number one thing we're trying to get across to everybody is education and awareness it should be talked about it shouldn't be hidden it shouldn't be but put behind closed doors people should talk about it and people should talk about it at school too so what do these guys do when they <clears throat> go into school do they deal with people one-on-one -on -one? are they doing lectures what kind of uh, uh, they're doing from what i understand what i heard they're doing programs like rachel's rachel's, rachel's project um, it was What's about Rachel's project. Rachel's project is is a girl that was one of the first people killed at um, it was either uh, Columbine or Sandy Hook, and uh, she was one of the first people that that got killed. And I, I, it was a shooting. Uh, again, and, uh, you're talking about who, this. Ra I don't. It's not that I don't care what who Rachel is. What happened to Rachel, again, like yours, spark yeah. Her something. parents, her so parents did something about it. School? I'm a parent. I'm worried about my kid in school. Here come these people into the school. Are they dealing with people one-on-one? -on -one? I asked her. They're making a lecture. Bullying isn't good. If you do it, it hurts you. It hurts the other person. Do they get up close? Oh, yeah. They get up close. They get, they get at the school. They show videos, films, what they can do. They talk with the faculty members. They talk with the students. They talk with the local police. Are they... I a recognized think, group or are they part yes of they're the big department? they're very much recognized they're they're a wonderful group but um uh, another thing that we need to do that's really important is have more funds for the police department for the juvenile section um for mpd like they did a great job with helping us and the schools with getting juvenile officer getting officers for juvenile section in the schools they have them i believe in the high schools and middle schools uh they sh they hopefully will get some with the elementary schools because we do need them well, uh, i'm not sure what you mean you mean just having police officers there at, at the schools school? definitely okay. i think we need police officers at schools um you know if if anything happens what's the response time for an officer to normally get to the school uh, the most precious thing in the world is our children they're at our schools we go to work we do our jobs we do our things and we leave our children in the care of these people and if something god forbid bad happens I would definitely want an officer there to help respond to the situation. They've been extremely helpful with, with um, my daughter and I and, and some of the bullying programs and, you know, with children in general. Their kids go to the school, too. So I, I just think funding needs to go out there. If anybody's hearing and they can do something about it, I think it's really important for funding of the of the police department, the teachers, the schools. They need more funding for, for helping with these specific so projects. When someone says something like that on my show, especially, yeah. like next week, something that can be done. We have Mike Molina as a guest. Who's on council? Cool. Yeah. Okay, so something can be done. Put an idea in front of someone who can do something about it. Now, here's someone who has a budget. Is he the one that's going to help you get that program, get more funding? Or is it someone that might be, for example, in a state that has money or are these private? Who do you I, think, I think it's really, is? I think it's really important to have some sort of oversight on the schools that they see where the, the funds for specific projects go. Where and, they uh, come from? Looking right now, what I was trying to do was reach out to our audience and say, "Okay, audience, this is what you do. Get your thinking caps on. If you got ideas, go in front of people. We need money for this program in the school. That's your kids too. Yeah. Who is going to be able to not just say we want it? Because I I can say we want it. A lot of people say we want a lot of things. But Sean has been able to implement programs. So how are we going to get more money to MPD? Or, if you will, be able to make sure that that's a priority for the chief to have uh, officers in every school and give them enough budget to be able to put those I think I think if, if the people out there care and they really want to do something about it, write your senators, write, senators. Your, write the senators, write our senators in Hawaii, write the governor. 
tell them about it write our mayors well, you know people, that that's where it starts but it starts to me yeah. with the guy that's on council who's our guest next week that's right i'm saying yeah. it they start with somebody who says well we should put more money here rather than here exactly and that's all this is so when we hear all these budget things going on here in the county and we hear st- i don't want to get too political in other areas but right here locally to get something like this to happen and get officers in the school yes we I mean, need to let the people who control the money flow that is already going on yeah I, I just allocate it a little differently yeah i think i think you know talking to your your uh, county representatives is really important i also think it's really important for state and federal funding to supply our schools and police departments with what they need so i think you should definitely write your state senators and um talk to Talk to anybody you can up in the the legal system like that that try to do something to help. Write them. If you know of a situation going on as well with bullying or suicide or anything, call the police. Let them know. Let them know. That's just don't wa- let it wash over your head and and ignore it. Like let somebody know about it. It's so important to sometimes just sit there and listen to somebody rather than talk. And you know that's one thing I learned. It's it's important. There's a lot of good people out there that definitely want to help. So this program, this Rachel's project, is a series of things that are done in schools. You've gone around and you've been speaking. So you speak to groups of students. Yes. Yes. And you share about the incident and you give them uh, I don't go into specifics about it exactly, but I do talk to them the most the, the most important thing is talking about education and awareness that bullying is happening, it's out there and what we can do to prevent it and stop it and help our neighbors. It doesn't matter if somebody is large, small, green, blue, red or black. We all have hearts. You know, we all have families, we, we, we all have feelings. We should help one another. We should be kind. We should do what's right. You know, um, hypocrisy is a funny word. A lot of people talk that about doing what's right and doing what's kind. But doing what's kind can be something like getting police officers in school. Right. Letting parents be a little more comfortable with that. Right. I don't want to leave that one yet. I know that... I am also a real big fan of, I mean, in, I have a, I'm in a group of men called the Mankind Project. And my name, that I chose it, is Gentle and Peaceful Lion. That means to me, very simply, doesn't mean I don't have the power, but I go about it in a different, more easy way. Don't mistake my gentleness with weakness, if you will. Same with you. You've been able to really... Um, be a giant impact. I see you're on a first name basis with a governor and a mayor and all these people because you've really taken this program out there. Um, what do you hope uh, is going on right now with you? Are you focused on that bullying program or is it now sort of in the hands of others and you're going in a different Well, way? I think just being on a show like this and talking about it you letting me on this show to talk about it is helping it might help one person and if it does that job's done right so we just got to keep doing that share it share it talk about it let people know don't ever stop and everybody has a voice in some way or another show it to me when i think of the word bullying i think it is truly um a word of bull charging so we all have this image of physical and now we are beginning to understand the power of the internet and how it's right. doing and that's where all these family and controls yep. but then the individual has to feel it do you have any kind of things going on through this program for kids you say you want to get into elementary school um, that sit in groups like I had a gentleman on here in your seat named Dwayne Elliott, who's running a program that's going gangbusters in schools in Oahu and on Big Island and Kauai and just the trickle beginning on Maui. But he's on Maui. And this is called Boys to Men, where they have kids that have maybe they've been some of the bullies, if you will. Mm-hmm. Or yep. they've been, but this is um, people that have uh, lost a parent you know, or feel a need, and they sit in groups, and they learn to they be talk about gentle it, right? about it. They talk about it. 
turn to and show them another way. Right. Like this show. Yeah. This doesn't mean we don't have the power to fight. Right. This means let's lay down our swords. That's it. Yeah. And it's not just about the kids that are getting picked on. It's about the some maybe it's about a kid who has who has issues, who has issue uh issues like you said and and doesn't know what direction or how to get help and that's why these programs and talking about it are so important. You know, even even the kids that are bullies, they need help, you know. They need to be taught what's right and wrong. And that's why I think these programs are just so important. We are going to take a break for our sponsors, and we're going to come right back with Sean Parkman. Sean Parkman, uh, if people want to get in touch with you, we're going to get them information. We're also going to give, um, with your help, some websites and direction to different things people can do. Sure. All sure, right? Sure. So you guys hang on. We love these sponsors. They're our favorites. Let's see if I can do this without my glasses. Um, got it. The Neutral Zone with me, Jason Schwartz, would like to sincerely thank David Bryan for his support. David was founder and head of school at New Road School in Santa Monica, California, and is the board chair at the Ojai Foundation and on the board for Brave New Films. The Neutral Zone is heard live Mondays at 11 a.m. here on KAKU 88.5 FM, the voice of Maui, and again on Saturdays at 7 a.m., as well as on TV and on Maui Neutral Zone. Want to host your own radio talk show? You can. Once every month, KAKU 88.5 FM offers an introduction to radio class at Akaku Plaza at 333 Dairy Road in Kahului. This introduction to radio will get your feet wet and show you what you need to do to get started. Interested? Call us at 871-5554 for more information and registration. They'll challenge your authority because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, and in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup. Hi, this is Steve Summers. Join me Sunday mornings from 1 to 2 a.m. with a replay Sunday mornings from 10 till 11 for the Oldies Time Machine. It's familiar oldies from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, plus some of those rare tracks you won't hear on any other radio program. Right here on KAKU 88.5, the voice of Maui. Hi, I'm Jason Schwartz, host of The Neutral Zone. KAKU is a listener-supported station. This means that all of the great programs you hear, like mine, are sponsored by you as well as our underwriters. If you would like to help keep the voice of Maui talking loud and clear, go to kakufm.org slash donate today and give. And don't miss the Neutral Zone Mondays at 11 a.m. on 88.5 FM, the voice of Maui. This is Jason Schwartz. I am here at the Neutral Zone with Sean Parkman. Sean, you um, to think of you as Sean Parkman, the guy about bullying, is very limiting. But I know <laughs> it's a very important part of your life. It became an important, important part of yeah. your life, especially as your wonderful daughter yes. is working and obviously has tremendous resources to be able to give to our world Thank you. now and in the future. Big heart. And um, you've been a great dad. Thank you. You know, I've heard, I heard in the wind this thing about super dad. <laughs> but you're a good dad. And that, in this age of uh, single parents and double parents and, and uh, parents, it's uh, really beautiful to see you standing so close and being so supportive of the daughter. The way you have thank you. Been. Thank you. I've had a lot of good people help me as well. So... I want to be sure that people get your email address clearly. They're going to see it on screen, but I'm going to give it out verbally for yes, to please get do. to a screen. Parkman Dog at AOL.com. P A R K M A N D O G. I can yeah. spell all those. At 
AOL.com. It's an old one, but it's work. It works. Uh, so. It's an old one. AOL? <laughs> yeah. AOL. I know a few people with AOL. It's, it's very funny. But, it, it's, but it's, it's good. It's, it's important. Like I said, contact your... If you want to do something besides contacting me, you can contact your state representative, your your senators, Other your agencies governor. Specifically? Contact the White House, believe it or not. Contact them. Complain to them. That's what they're there for. You know, they they'll help. We <laughs> we called. We called. Uh, we wrote the when Michelle Obama and, and Mr. O, President Obama were in the White House, and they responded quite a few different times. It was awesome. And and Miss Obama actually helped with uh, some of our project to get going with the anti-bully program, and she she urged us to to start a nonprofit and a, and a, get something going to where we can help she our community. She urged you with money? No, okay. with talking to us. Yeah, I I am I wouldn't say tired of, but talking is good. But there are many that have the resources and right. I would right. like to see those resources differently allocated. It's one I agree. thing to ask someone for money, and the other thing is change our hearts, become more receptive, and give money. You know, yeah. to me, I'd rather see someone help because they genuinely feel. Right. And this is such a, a powerful subject. We need to give money for the right subject, and that's why I was talking about an oversight committee to be f for to for the DOE to see what funds are spent where exactly. Because you can give a lot of money to one area and then they can put it in different areas of the school. But if you say, hey, this is specifically used for bullying and um, for the police department to, to send officers, like have a, have a station for one officer to be at the school. You know, I, I think it's important in these days now that are happening with all the things that are going on. And you think that someone from the public, this I'm bringing, a, I'm walking through the chain. Sure. What you're saying is very important, but it's very hard for us as citizens, private one, to maybe be able to earmark dollars and track them all the way through, so especially right. especially in a in a uh, state organization like the DOE, it's difficult. Well, again, I've had people like everything. When you sit in this seat, you meet people from all perspectives. There are people inside the DOE working at the DOE for mm -hmm. as old as you and me. Right, good people, really good people. Who can't do what you just asked. Uh, correct. So that's why I'm saying i understand that the goal is to have the the for example the officers and the this so we can make good recommendations i am reaching for people to take a look inside their own hearts because i really believe that you know that is where it really begins is if we live what would happen in our world if we recognize something had compassion and then extended some of what we have I've helped people some many times when I don't have resources, but it's my heart that drives me. Right. I'm driven. And that's why I brought it back when I was talking about right. schools. Everyone can be selfish. That's your kids in there. Right. And potentially these situations. Grandkids, but just in children. General, really, no, that our world needs to lighten up and care about each other. Right. Be a zone right. where we can talk instead of shooting each yep, other before that's right. we talk. Education and awareness, talking what about are we it. Often talking about it all boils down to love and respect and caring things. Helping one another. It's help, it, it is that. It's right. the interpersonal relations. So that's why I asked about the bullying and the way I did about whether you talk as a group, your presence to a group. I'm sure that that um, just your gentle presence. You, I've seen you talk about strong things. This guy is a terrific writer, and uh, really, there are so many things about Sean Parkman that are hidden behind this veil of the champion of uh, <laughs> bullying. <laughs> Tell us more about you. In fact, I'm going to jump to that. I think right now. What is it that you want to do when you grow up, little boy? <laughs> I just want to make sure my daughter gets a good good start on life and she has all the resources she needs to do that and she has a very productive happy healthy life that's but that's my main goal in life right now i'm a single parent i'm an honorably discharged veteran um you know it's it's 
I, I love children. I love kids. I come from a, a family of teachers. My grandmother was a principal and a teacher for over 40 years. My aunt just retired as a teacher in San Diego. Um, and my cousin is, is a teacher. She goes out to Africa and donates her time freely and teaches English out there. I mean, just we have a huge amount of, of teaching people in our family. And it's just, you know, it's about helping others and it's about doing the right thing. And I think, you know, if the people out there want to do something, they hear this show, one person gets help, that's fantastic. That's our job's done. But you need to keep it going. So write the White House, write your governor, write your senators, let them know, you know, you want money for this specific project, whether it be the police department juvenile section going out there, or it's, you know, talking about a program like Rachel's project or the bullying, like the movie or, or something like that. Just talk about what it. What is bullying and, like the movie? Mean? Uh, bullying. There's, there's a big yellow symbol with a slash. It says, uh, bullying, no bullying. That's it's, they made a movie out of it. It's a fantastic movie. And, um, it, it just sheds light on what's going on. Um, it's, it's, it was, uh, definitely people should look at it and watch it. Go Google it. Google it. Bullying the movie. Can you imagine we live in a world where someone can sit in front of me and tell me to Google it? <laughs> you know, Google used to be a really big number and it was an elusive <laughs> kind of thing. Nobody even, now we say the word Google like it's a nothing. A Google it, Google it, that means lots of choices. I am, I am uh, one who many times we can educate our people, but like you say, it's, do something. Whether you write a letter, go to a meeting and express it to the principal, whether you uh, write a letter and express it to a politician, I want to say a, a public servant, mm -hmm. let's call them. Yeah. A politician, politics is a really a funny word. It connotes a twist that I don't right. particularly like. But many of these people, like Mike Molina, who's coming next week, Mike is a public servant. If you went up to Mike Molina and said, you know, I, I have a kid in school and this is what's happening, you would recognize that Mike Molina is a man from his heart. Yeah, he cares. He I, makes I, his I decisions from right. his head, and he, but he bases it on his heart. Yeah, he's got he's a lot of love a there. a very loving yeah, guy. Yeah. In fact, I said to him, are you going to be running for mayor? I, he said, I don't know. I could. <laughs> he could. You know, be, it's just like in anything. But going to people and telling them what's up. I have seen a stack of letters sit on many people's desk, and it's a matter of which stack is higher, which gives them some kind of reading. But when there are no letters... You want to have somebody there. That's why, we, hopefully, we. That's what we do when we go to the ballot box and vote. Yep, that's right. And that's a. It's not only to me, a, an opportunity, but it seems like a responsibility. It is for our own lives. It's a that, gift. That is the place where we have a, a lot of potentially control, especially like in these days, if people have an opinion. And uh, they back it up with fact. Right. They make sure their opinions do their good, research, and then they vote on it mm -hmm. to say, "Oh no, it doesn't really matter." It does really matter. Every paper plate you throw away, every anything that you do is accumulating to the problem. And there's also an example to others. Do you do you find that uh, you your daughter is? An example to other people, has she gotten a lot of kids coming up to her and, and expressing their thank yous? Oh, yes. It's it's a beautiful feeling, too. It's a beautiful thought to see that, like, just people appreciating her and, and what she's done. And she's not one to talk about it or get up on stage or, or brag about anything. But, man, she has the biggest heart in the world. And it's I believe it's because she was born here in Maui. She has good people around her loving good people and uh she was just brought up that way to help others and and you need to do that we also i just want to say a note real quick we have 
the best teachers in the world. We have a fabulous assortment of teachers here in Maui in the state of Hawaii and good faculty as well. There's a lot of people who really care and stand up and do what's right. Uh, people like uh, Gene Zaro and his wife over at Kihei Charter. Um, there's people all over the place. We have um, Maui Autism Center, Howard Greenberg and Denise's wife, the, the mayor, um, past mayors, the governor, Governor Ige, I, I love Governor Ige. He was he was really supportive and helpful. But there's been a lot of teachers, a lot of principals, a lot of faculty members, a lot of students who came forward and helped us with getting the research and uh, helping get getting these these uh, programs implemented in the schools. Whether it be their end of year project as a senior talking to them or just having a family member or a teacher or somebody just jumping on the bandwagon and saying, hey, I'm going to do my part and try to do the best I can to help with education and awareness on bullying. Police Department, both chief of police here in Maui County have been stupendous in helping us and uh, they really care. They, they want to make a difference. Um, just the whole police department in general has been really kind and helpful when it comes to the kids and the schooling and uh, our teachers you know they're they're great so if i talk uh, negatively about something that happened to my daughter at one school it's not singling out teachers it, it was never about that or anything it was about there was a problem in the system of the school not working on dealing with the problem which was bullying and now they have a, a, a now they have a, a fixer, which is the program for education and awareness of bullying. They can't stop it. They need to keep doing it. The more they do it, the more they talk about it, the better it is. What? How young do they go right now in the school on this bullying program? They, they do it in elementary school, and they should. They should talk about it. Treat your fellow students and your teachers and faculty with respect. And the same for the faculty and, and teachers. They need to treat other faculty members and and with respect the, the principals need to teach uh, be respectful to the teachers as well and um, and the students but it's a it's a full it comes full circle everybody has to with the parents as well everybody has to help each other everybody needs to be respectful to one another and if you don't talk about a problem if there's a problem that you know about that's going on in your school with your kid or any other kid you should bring it up and talk about it don't hide it because you're not going to fix it if you keep it hidden. You, you can't fix something unless you talk about it and bring it up. Yes, I'm with you. So let's bring it up. <laughs> Here's something to bring up. Hey, Maui, how about it? Are we going to be a self-sustainability model for the world? Are we going to show them how we treat each other in a better way? All the things... Are you aware that there are two cameras here? No, I didn't know. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Surprise! This is reality television. Okay, cool. <laughs> that camera is you. It's got you. And that camera has got me. And we are on Facebook Live. Oh, nice. But then I take this and I put credits on it and do my thing and stick it on Akaku TV. Akaku's awesome. Plus it's sitting up on YouTube and on MauiNeutralZone.com with the rest of the 60-something shows, because yeah. what I think and I believe is that we can be an example to the world. When I do an interview like this with someone like you, I'm thinking that there's someone that will see this, they could be in South Dakota or South Africa, but uh, the issues are the same. It's come from your heart, share what's going on with you, with someone that can make a difference. We express our opinions, but we take action to bring greater heart. To me, I go back to the heart all the time. Because I think that <laughs> it is. if we change the way people are, not by telling them, but by being that example, example. that they can identify with. Like you. I, I've never seen you really get angry. I'm sure that's not something I'd like to see. <laughs> Especially you carry a cane. No, but, uh, but you're very gentle. Your approach is more of receptive and process. We need, I think, to be able to be that example as for the really young and as we go through to show that problems can happen uh, it can be solved not only by budding heads, but by 
being receptive and really getting a feeling for who someone else is. That difference in our young people can bring a bullying program to be something that we're aware of, but we don't have that level of anger and fighting. Right, right. It's all, I guess, in our media. My, my lady friend, Arielle, won't watch violent things, doesn't want to see them. And when I said, well, but it's not making you prepared for the world, I thought, prepared for what world? Wouldn't it be nice if we all just recognized and saw and understood a more gentle place? The word bullying, you know, is a, is a funny word. It's, I always think of Popeye the Sailor Man and Bluto, who is the, the big bully, right. you know. But um, kids are really, they can be very, very, very hard on each other. They can. It's like, that is really why I think, you know, to tell them what to do. They is, need to be supervised, they, and, and they, they need to be taught. And they need to be given an environment when they're younger. Correct. That allows them to feel safe and comfortable yes. to express themselves without these extra things that go on, attacking yes. others, thinking that will somehow raise them to right. some level. And if there's no, even if there's no, excuse me for interjecting, but no, if, please. If there's no funds for, let's say, something happens on the recess field, and there's not enough funds to put enough teachers out on the field to watch the kids, I mean, if you really knew. If the people really knew out there, how many teachers are required to be out on the recess field? How many students per teacher is it re required? I mean, how many teachers are, are supposed to be out there with how many students? That's that's an important factor. It's people should look that up. They'd be quite surprised and then go you know check out the schools ask them volunteer help uh, another thing i think they need to do real good is is uh do background checks on some of the people that volunteer at schools i think that's really really important um not saying that there's anybody bad there i'm just saying they just need to do um background checks on everybody anybody that's going to be around our children the most purest thing we have we need to protect that we need to check on things. We need to make sure money's being allocated the proper way, and uh, they're given the best chance possible at the best life possible. Especially here on Maui, we should be example setters to the rest of the world. That's showing, what I was saying. Showing everybody how to do it. Examples and in every way. Every way. And that's why I was trying to boil it down, because you know we can. You constantly going back to the needing more money. I think so. But I also feel that for long-term success here, we need to not forget that other part. Right. Because that one doesn't cost money. That right. Is a the matter help. of perception right. of how what we bring into the game. If we go in, you know, what I won't remember is it the Loretas of the Lost Ark. If you go into a knife fight with a gun, you know, the different kinds of scenarios. Putting all those things aside. And we're fighting about something. Wait a minute. Let's. What is it that you want? What do I want? Is there a way that both of these things can happen at the same time? Probably. Is it over something physical that we might share and understand different way? To me, that's why I keep going back to these programs are only as good as we, all of us, take responsibility individually to be and come from a more gentle, I guess that's how I gentle and peaceful lion, a gentle, peaceful place. So where we're actually receptive. Imagine if the kids in school, instead of fighting, would see what they could do to help someone else, like your right. daughter. What a great example. Yeah. Say. Or a friend bench. You know, some schools have actual friend bench. Somebody's feeling low, they, they want somebody to be a friend, they go sit on this bench. Somebody, hey, they, they know about it. The peers at the school, faculty That's people, yeah, have a little bench. You, you feeling a little low? Kids go sit on it. They want some attention. They need to talk. People are aware about it. They go sit next to them and talk about it. You that's know, interesting. Just, that's a neat. And the bullies circle around and go, "Hey, what's going on, huh? Something bothering you?" I don't think it, 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 it's it's possible, but I think the more we talk about it, the more people and children are going to be aware of it, and not be receptive to having it happen. And the children, even you children who are listening to this show, children of all ages, 
being gentle, coming from a more gentle place. Really, I, I keep thinking that the modeling of that is, is really so important. I wonder sometimes that, um, oh, son? Okay. I wonder sometimes whether that kids wouldn't, why are these children out bullying? Where have they learned? How has it become real to them that bullying is an acceptable practice? Where is that supported in their own world? Yeah, know? not just at home, but if they're not supervised properly, like you said before, they need an atmosphere where they're, uh, they're watched properly and they have, they have good supervision and they're taught the right way. It's important to have that. That's, and you know the Maui News has been great too. By the way, just I wanted you to the know they're awesome. I love the you Maui young News. People, there's this thing called the Maui News. It's a physical newspaper. <laughs> I, I'm saying that in, in jest. And, and brown bags to start. You ever hear of brown, brown bags to start? Brown bags to start them was Johnny Kai. Johnny Kai is a friend of ours. Go okay. ahead, please. No, I was going. Brown bags to start them is you start in eating at a brown bag, <laughs> no. and then you have start them. What do you think it is? It's, it's a fantastic program where a gentleman by the name of Johnny Kai over in Oahu helps kids in schools um, uh, boost, boost their self. It's entertainment, but boost their, their self-esteem, whether it's from modeling, dancing, playing music, singing, anything. Anything artistic or something you want to get out there and do, he helps with that. He's really cool. So what does he do? Showcase. He helps. He showcases. He goes so, to that's schools, what I said. finds out, lets him have contests. Where someone who's eaten out of a brown bag can become a star. He's writing on my page again. He must want me to see something. I bet he could have told me. Let's see what it says. Oh, got to go. <laughs> Gotta go. Well, that's okay. Let me just... Sorry. Sean Parkman, you've been a really beautiful guest. Do you want to give a phone number or you just want to leave Parkman? Uh, Parkmandog at AOL.com. Parkman if they have any AOL. question or they com. need help at all, uh, no charge. I'm willing to talk to anybody free. It's it's fine. Um, you know, I'm a simple person. I'm a dad. I'm just trying to help my kid and I'm help, help trying to help others out there. If it, there's any kind of issue where you think somebody might be in danger wanting to commit suicide or talking about it call 911 call the police let them know what's going on it's very important even if they're acting like it's a joke the it's crisis not a joke. line the police recommend yes. you can call the crisis line but let the 911 easy just yeah. let them know right away that's important but i'm just saying thank you for coming okay. i know you got to go mahalo thank, thank you. you everyone Sean Parkman has been a wonderful part of our island's solutions and Thank, Thank you. you, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Aloha. Well, hey, okay, you guys are stuck with me for a little bit here. That's all right. <laughs> You've heard me talk before. Thank you again, Sean. Thank for you coming. again, Jason. See you here tomorrow. See you. See you at school. That's right. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, and the um, Maui College is awesome, by the way. Oh yeah. Well, there, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a little. <laughs> I'll give a plug. <laughs> Sean is at college. We're in a class, like I said. Brian Cohn, who's running the creative media department, has this class called Finding Your Voice. And there was Sean Parkman. And uh, I just thought his subject was an important one for you guys to hear and know and experience. And it gave me yet another chance to talk about heart. You know, I've had a, a, you know, a, a real challenge in my life sometimes in... Uh, trying to diffuse people that are just too hot, too hot on issues. We need to calm down and come from a more gentle place. That's how I think it is. And be receptive to hearing an answer from someone else. This anger and positioning has really gotten, I think maybe the media has fanned the flames to make it worse. People feel empowered, and it's also difficult to tell relatively what's important and what's not important. So that's why the real thing that will make you really know is how your heart feels. But you got to be getting down to the, the basic of, of feeling your heart first, you know, and coming from that place. 
Well, you know, we have another guest next week, and uh, Councilman Mike Molina. So um, I hope you'll have people tune in. And know that any show that you see here and hear, you can go to MauiNeutralZone.com. You can go to KAKU Radio on Facebook and find these shows, but you can find them all lined up on my page. MauiNeutralZone.com. They're all up on YouTube as well by uh, keywords. And they're on Akaku. I wait about a month and then put them into Akaku Maui Community Media TV. Um, this station is part of a greater vision called Serving Communities, Access to Media. That means that if you would like to be doing a show, whether it's like me or like anything that's in your mind, you can come forward and have a place to be and share it. They have classes on how to do it. They have uh, uh, wonderful people. R literally, I have never seen a place that I felt more comfortable that was so there and so nurturing for the public to get their messages out. Uh, thank you, Sean, for being here today. Uh, thank all of you for coming and faithfully checking in here at the Neutral Zone. Uh, I believe that I'm accumulating things, and then I'm going to show you how all these pieces fit together. You may see it, but I just had an opportunity to see this green powerhouse. We have someone coming to us at the end of... Uh, or maybe middle of January, talking about hey, taking all our green waste, turning it into power. And the byproduct is this superfood, regenerative uh, ag that it will make things grow in an incredibly beautiful and natural way. Sort of a natural department of water and power. We've talked about water from air. We'll talk more about it and how we can do this. I may well talk about it next week with Mike Molina when he's here. Thank you guys all for joining us. We only have a few seconds to go. It has been a pleasure. I'm going to get rid of my cold. And you guys, I hope all have a beautiful Thanksgiving, and we will see you next week. Thank you all for joining us. I really enjoy doing this. I hope you enjoy listening or watching, because uh, that's why we're doing it. Aloha. Take your time. Love somebody. Aloha.